Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm reimagining the old Simon Says memory game and turning it into an escape room puzzle. The electronic memory game Simon Says is a real classic. Many people will remember it from their childhood, trying to rack up as many uh, long chains of button smashing and, until you finally failed and had to start over again. I wanted to take the nostalgia of the Simon Says game and turn it into an escape room puzzle so that the output of the game would turn into another message or a code or would trigger an event in another part of an escape room. If you remember the puzzle from your childhood and you'd love to see how it works out here, let's get started. For this project, I'm using arcade buttons, 60 millimeters. These are arcade buttons with LEDs inside. I'm also using a piezo buzzer that I harvested from an old PC. And I'm controlling it with an Arduino Nano, uh, which will give me all the terminals that I need and still be nice and small to put in the project box. I 3D printed the project box and the panel for it with all the right knockouts for the buttons. I really find 3D printing a real joy in this case. And it makes the project a lot easier to make exactly Exactly what I want. I started by wrapping the panel in vinyl like I've done before and I really like that it does improve the texture quite a bit of the 3D print and without sanding or finishing you do get you know a pretty nice smooth surface to work with. So I just applied the vinyl and worked out any bubbles and then cut out the holes with a exacto knife. I also created some very small holes in the center which are going to let the sound out from the buzzer. Next, I'm going to install the arcade buttons, simply pop them apart, slide them through, put the lock nut on the other side, and then install the LED and micro switch. Now that's starting to look like Simon said. Next, I'm going to install ground wires to each of the button and LED combos, and I'm going to bring them all to one common wire. So to, for each button and LED, we're going to need to install a ground wire to one side of the switch and also to one side of the LED. So here I'm going through and putting the connectors on and then crimping them in place. Uh, these are very fine wires, so I would double them up and crimp them together. Also, I would use you know, two in one in order to go to the next button or three in one in order to go to the next button. Next, I'm going to install the jumper wires for each individual button. So I'm simply going around and making myself jumpers for that and each one leaving a long enough cable so that I'll be able to tie it into the Arduino Nano. I didn't realize when I first started that the LEDs and the buttons had different size spade terminals. So next day here I am installing the other size because I had to go and purchase it. But now that I've got it, I'm able to go through and put the correct size spade terminal connectors on each of the LEDs. They were a little wider than the ones for the buttons. And so I'm just crimping all those on. I also use a battery here to be able to tell which side is positive and negative on the LEDs, which will cause it to light up, and then make sure that I put the ground side on the negative. Next, I'm going to make jumper wires for the positive side of the LEDs. So I'm just going to, again, uh, make some jumper wires that are long enough, and then strip and crimp, in, crimp on connectors for it. Now it's time to actually connect the terminals on the Arduino Nano. So I'm using a terminal strip shield here and I'm simply going to install the ground wire and then put the LEDs and the buttons on. The LEDs are gonna go through terminals two, three, four, and five, and the corresponding buttons are gonna go on terminals six, seven, eight, and nine. And I did them in order of green, red, blue, yellow, but of course you can do it whatever you'd like and just change your code accordingly. I'm also going to connect the buzzer and I'm going to put one side of it to ground and the other side of it to pin number 11. You can use pin 10 or other pins, but you need to make sure that it is a PWM pin so that you can vary the frequency. Let's take a look at the code. First thing I'm going to do, and this is an intermediate code, so you'll put, pick up parts in here and there depending on your skills and background in Arduino. First thing I did is define uh, which each of the buttons and LEDs are going to be and what corresponding pin they went to. You could also use variables here, but I chose to use the define. Uh, also, I needed to define notes and their frequencies because I'm going to uh, use tones to give feedback to the user uh, when they're going to have a success or fail or when they've completed the puzzle. I also used arrays to define the LED sequence, the buttons, and the tones that are going to be used for each one. And then we get into 
the Simon Says variables and the ones that were included in the code that I found online. And they're simply going to be uh, a max level, a sequence that is the size of the max level, uh, your own sequence that's also the size of the max level, and it's going to begin on level one. So level is defined here as well. There's a variable for velocity, and this is how quickly each um, part of the sequence is displayed. So how much time between each flash. It's set at 1,000, but I changed it to 500. I'm going to define uh, the buzzer pin, which is going to let me make the tones. And so I'm saying that that's number 11. And then I'm going to have an output of Morse code tones when I'm finished. So in order to make the Morse code, I had three different variables as well. The setup loop is pretty simple. I used iteration and grayed out or commented out the code that they had originally used because it takes four lines of code for each one line of iteration. So instead I used iteration on just a nice quick and easy way of defining all the LEDs, defining all the pins, and then turning all of the LEDs to low. The generate sequence function is next and that function simply generates the sequence all the way up to the length of the max level and it's going to use random numbers in order to do that and it's just going to step through each of the positions of the sequence and assign a random number between 2 and 5 and those correspond to the pins where the LEDs were so it needs to be in pin 2, 3, 4 and 5 and that will match to somewhere in the sequence. The show sequence then is going to look at the current level and it's going to display the corresponding button color that is at each level. So as you progress, you know, you're at three or four levels. Now it's going to display each individual color that matches that sequence. I also included a tone here as well that's going to play the matching tone that matches the color of the button. Now the loop here is actually quite simple. Before the game starts, it's going to generate the sequence, and then it's going to wait for button presses to tell it to turn on and start the game. Uh, so I used the green and yellow button pressed together in order to trigger the game. You could have it trigger by another external button or something else. And then all it's going to do is simply keep showing the sequence and then waiting for a confirmation of that sequence to be entered back in. The get sequence section is the most complicated. Here they set a flag to turn on whether or not um, it has been read successfully and it simply looks for a button press. When that button has been pressed, it lights up the corresponding LED, plays the matching tone for that LED, uh, see, and then checks if that is the correct button to be pressed for the sequence. If your sequence and the correct sequence are a match, then it will turn the button low and move on to the next one. If it's the wrong button, then it will play the wrong sequence function. At the end, if all of the button presses match the correct sequence, then it's going to play the right sequence function. And now the right sequence function is simply my little happy tone. I commented out all of their original code, which was to flicker the lights. I found that less intuitive than just simply having tone feedback. The last thing it does here is check if it's reached max level, and if it has reached max level, it's going to play the success tone, the success melody, I should say, and then it's going to go to a while loop. This while loop is where you're going to put the code that you want to be triggered. I included some Morse code functions that are down below, but you could put anything in there. This is where you'd put uh, whatever you want to happen next when the, when the puzzle has been solved, when it's reached the max level. If it hasn't yet reached the max level, it's also going to increase it every time you have a correct sequence so that the sequence gets longer. On the other hand, if we look at the wrong sequence function, you see that again I commented out all of the actual flashing of the LEDs and instead I'm going to play the fail sequence melody. After a fail, it's also going to set the level back to 1 and the velocity back to uh, whatever you want it to be. I chose 500. Next, I'm just going to show you the little melodies that I created for fail, uh, for happy, which is a successful sequence, and for success, which is meaning that you actually completed all the levels and you've reached the max level. The bottom part here is for the Morse code section. So I'm defining here what a dot is, so a dot function, which gives the spacing for how a dot is defined in Morse code, and it uses the buzzer tone on note C4 in order to create that. I'm going to do the dashes 
as well as a dash function and that's going to list out each of the uh, dash uh, characteristics and then down below that is the functions for each and every number uh, in the number system so then simply it's a, an arrangement of dots and dashes so if we go back up to our while loop, you can see that I'm calling the functions for a code 9123. So that Morse code will just keep playing over and over again. Uh, presumably you'd want it to end after a certain point. For the sake of my sample, that's what it's going to do. Just play that same Morse code over and over again so they can figure out to use that Morse code in something else. Enough with the code, let's take a look at how it works. So it takes a fair amount of code and playing around, but you can see that the same kind of concepts get rehashed over and over again in coding. And if you play around with what you're given as examples online, you really can personalize it and customize it in a way that can give you brand new opportunities like with this game here. So there you have a bit of nostalgia and a new way to use it. I hope you took some inspiration from this project today. Maybe you're not going to create the same thing, but maybe it'll inspire you on how to try something different in your own projects. If you like the projects we're doing, please consider subscribing to the channel. Let us know in the comments what kinds of things we could be doing better or, you know, new project ideas that you'd like to see down the road. Tell your friends and family, <laughs> we'd love more subscribers and views. And until next time, in all your DIY projects, don't be afraid to be bolder.